Hi everyone, this is Animal Bed Goes Again. This is part two of my Bat Facts video. So, let's get started. So, I already told you what was fiction and what was fact in my last Bat video. But you're probably wondering, apart from those facts, why are bats so important to us? What do they do for us? And I will tell you those facts in this video right now. So for the small bats in the United States, I mentioned how they eat insects. And you're probably wondering, well, why is that important? Well, it's actually important for a few reasons. Is one, nobody likes getting bothered by mosquitoes and such. So one, they get rid of the insects that would bother us. And this also has another benefit because it's been proven through research and such that mosquitoes can also transmit or carry diseases. So when the bats are eating the insects, they're not only having a meal, but they're also helping to control diseases that could potentially, you know, be given to humans through mosquitoes. But apart from that, there's actually another reason why bats are also very important. And it's a reason you might not think about or know about, but it actually is our food. Now, let me explain real quick. We get our food from farmers. So what happens is farmers will grow crops of fruit, vegetables, what have you. And then once it's properly grown and everything and it's, you know, all set and ready to go, then it goes from the farmers and it gets shipped into our stores and everything. We buy the fruits and vegetables. Then we, you know, buy the food, take it home, wash it and eat it. Now, what does all this have to do with bats? Well, it turns out there are, in fact, some insects, such as a few beetle species, or like one or two beetle species, that actually like the food as well, except they go after it when it's growing in a farmer's crop. And bats eat insects, so actually what bats are doing is they will eat the beetles and other insects that are going after the food that we get from the farmers, essentially. So bats who eat insects are not only helping to make sure that we don't get diseases, but they also help protect our food as well. So that is actually very helpful for us. Now you're probably wondering how many insects does a bat eat? Well, every single night, one bat by itself can eat between 1,000 and 5,000 insects every single night. If you think that's not impressive, just take that one fact and multiply it by, say, 50, hundreds, or even thousands of bats that are going around at night eating insects during the spring to fall seasons, and you're getting thousands of insects getting eaten by bats, which helps us out a lot. So they're a huge help to us, especially in the United States, those small micro bats. But the big bats also help us because it turns out that there are two particular bat species who are pollinators. And what happens is the bats, just like bees, well, except, of course, bees are a little bit different, but what happens is for bats is they will fly to a flower at night, and it's mostly uh, flowers that will bloom at dusk or during the nighttime. But anyways, they'll actually fly to the flowers and they'll just bury their face and their nose in it, and what ends up happening is they get a bunch of pollen on their face and their nose. And what happens with pollination is they'll fly to a different flower, but then some of that pollen will actually fall off their face from the other flower they were at before, get into the next flower that they go into, and that's how pollination works. And it helps spread more flowers and trees. And it turns out, according to scientists, that those two particular bat species in the deserts who help pollinate the flowers actually help the desert a lot, the southern deserts, because they're the key pollinators of some of the plants that we often find in the deserts, uh, including, I think, a few cactus species. And if it wasn't for those bats, a lot of the plants that are actually in the deserts now wouldn't exist because those plants wouldn't be getting pollinated by any mammal, any other animals, if the bats weren't around. Now, what about fruit bats? Do they benefit us? And the answer to that question, of course, is yes, they also benefit us. But they benefit us in a little bit of a different way. So they actually also help us out with our food as well. 
And what happens with fruit bats is, of course, they're going to eat fruit. But here's what happens. Fruit has seeds in it. And you can actually see that if you decide to cut a whole fruit in half, and you might see some of the seeds. And this is actually very important because what happens is bats will eat a fruit like a mango or something. And what, sorry. And what happens is when the bat is eating, it's also eating the seeds. And what happens is after they have their meal, they'll go flying out at night. And as they go flying out at night, they'll go to the bathroom. But when they go to the bathroom, they're not just getting rid of, you know, bad stuff they don't need. They're all, the seeds from the fruit are also actually coming out when they go to the bathroom. And when this happens, this is actually huge in a positive way because those seeds then over time due to soil conditions, weather conditions, etc., will actually help by making a brand new mango tree or whatever fruit the bat was eating. And they do this for a lot of fruit plants, which is very beneficial because essentially that if we get fruit from the forest, then the ancestor of the fruit you're eating might have been pollinated by a bat. But this also helps other animals because the trees can also provide shade and shelter for other animals. So they're actually beneficial not only to us humans, but also other animals as well. And this, of course, is, you know, not only important, but they also give us a lot of good foods that we often eat. So you have mangoes, avocado, um, tequila, a whole bunch of fruits that we eat. Even foods you might not think about, like chocolate. Yes, you heard that right. Chocolate. And that's because fruit bats will also pollinate the cocoa bean, which we use in companies and such to make chocolate. So, yeah, we also happen to get help with chocolate being made by bats. So, yeah, they're very, very beneficial to us that way. Now, obviously, a lot of that is very helpful. But there's also some other facts about bats that you also may not know. For example, um, one myth that you may have heard that I didn't mention in the other video, but I'll mention it now, is that people will say bats are birds. And that's actually not true. There's a, var a variety of different differences from them. Uh, and here are some of those differences. For example, birds have feathers and bats don't. They actually have fur as well as a thin skin membrane in between their fingers that allows them to fly. And yes, bats have fingers. And here's why. A bat's wing is essentially a lot like a human hand, and that's because they're in the scientific order Chiroptera, which literally means hand wing. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, if I show you my hand, a bat's wing is just like my hand. So what you have here is thumb, index finger, middle finger, ring finger, and a pinky. Sorry, there's the pinky. So essentially, a bat's wing looks like a human hand. But the difference is the thumb looks a little bit more like a hook. It's, it's not as noticeable, but it's still there. The other four fingers are actually a lot thinner in the bones. They're a lot longer, so they're extended. And in between each finger, there is a thin skin membrane in between each finger that allows the bat to fly. And if you want to know what the membrane feels like without actually having to touch a bat, which I would not recommend. But still, if you want to know what it feels like, if you close your eye and touch your eyelid, it feels a lot similar to that. Or another way to feel what a bat swing might feel like, if you take the skin that is in between your thumb and your index finger, this piece of skin that I'm trying real hard to stretch out, the skin right in between your index finger, index and thumb, if you touch that and you make sure it's not wet or sticky or anything, it's just dry and you know natural and everything, if you touch it, it's very similar to what the membrane feels like on a bat's wing. So yeah, bats actually do jazz hands. Jazz hands! So yeah, that's how bats are able to fly, so they fly with their hands. 
And you're probably thinking, well, gee, that probably means bats are actually a little bit similar to us. And they actually are. And that's because bats are mammals. They give birth to their young, or at least mothers do, and they are warm-blooded. And another difference, actually, apart from being mammals and also not having feathers that makes bats different apart from birds, is bats don't have a beak. They actually have a mouth, which means, of course, they have a tongue, they have saliva, they have teeth. So, no, bats are not birds. They are mammals, just like humans and wolves and bears and, you know, tigers and deer and, you know, a whole bunch of other mammals. However, there's something special about that. And I've mentioned how bats can fly, and it turns out bats are the only mammals in the world that can truly fly. Now, you're probably thinking, well, what about a flying squirrel? Well, flying squirrels actually don't fly. What they do is they glide. Because what happens is they'll jump from one branch of a tree to another, and they also have a little bit of a skin membrane in between their arms and their legs, but it's different than a bat. Because bats, like I said, fly with their hands. A flying squirrel doesn't do that. It has skin that's in between its arms and its legs. Almost like if you were to do a jumping jack, and you take the distance from your arms to your legs, that space is what covers the flying squirrel, and it's a combination of skin that's stretched out as well as fur. And what happens is they'll jump from one branch of a tree to another, and that skin is stretched out and light enough that it will actually act like a parachute. So what they're doing is they're essentially gliding through the air. They don't fly and flap like a bat does. So that's a difference between a flying squirrel and a bat, is bats actually can fly, a flying squirrel just glides. So yeah, a little bit more info for you there. So yeah, you're welcome with that. And in addition to all of this, for bats... They actually have a variety of differences for species. So, for example, fruit bats will actually have small ears, and the small bats, the micro bats, will have big ears, and that's so they can hear the echolocation. So there's even different features. But there's a particular species of small micro bats that you might or might not have heard of before, and that's a leaf nose bat. And these bats are actually pretty special because their nose is actually in the shape of a leaf. This is actually a huge advantage or a positive note for those bats because the leaf nose is how the leaf nose bats echolocate at night. So yes, they echolocate like other small bats, but instead of using their larynx, like I said in the other video, my first one, the leaf nose bats actually don't do that. They actually use their leaf nose and that's how they send echolocation to find their way around. What is a positive thing about this is they can echolocate through their nose, but they can also carry a bit of fruit like an apple, banana, mango, what have you, in their mouth. And this actually allows them to not only fly around at night and make sure they don't run into anything, but they can fly and eat at the same time. Which I guess you could say would be the equivalent of a human walking and eating, which I guess you could do, but... If you were to say, run and eat, no, I would not recommend that. No, 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 no. But yeah, those are some other facts about bats that I wanted to get out to you guys. So hopefully you'd find that interesting. Now, you're probably wondering what I am doing with these bat videos. Why all of a sudden am I uploading all these bat videos? Well, unfortunately, the problem is in the United States, the small bats really need our help. And that's because they're getting attacked by a fungus called White Nose Syndrome, or WNS for short. And that is actually causing a lot of problems for bats in the United States. And unfortunately, and you may have noticed this, but the weather is starting to get colder. And if you might have guessed, this fungus affects, affects bats during the winter. Now, why is this so important? Well, that's because bats hibernate. And just like bears, what will happen is they'll sleep during the winter, and that's for them to save energy. Because what happens is when it's winter time, there's not enough food for them to eat. So what they're doing is they're sleeping and saving up energy for when it's warmer weather, and there's more food available. But I will actually talk more about that in my next video. 
So until then, take care and have a good day.